Anyway, so you download Anaconda and you just run it on whatever platform you're on. And now we're gonna set up a new environment. And you can just do that with conda create dash n and the environment name. So we're gonna call it OI. Now I might already have one. If I do, it'll complain. Once you've created it, you can just activate it by going conda activate um, whatever you called it in the previous step. And now where it said base, it'll now say whatever your um, new environment is. So in our case, OI for open interpreter. And the reason we do this is so we don't have dependency issues between modules like Python modules. And normally what you do is, is pip install open interpreter. Now some of you might already have open interpreter installed so we want to do very similar um, command to upgrade it pip install open interpreter but we're going to do dash dash upgrade so when we write dash dash upgrade it'll actually upgrade the pip package we're installing to the latest one if we already have it otherwise it wouldn't upgrade it if we didn't include the dash dash upgrade Okay, that's it. After you've installed the pip package, you literally have interpreter installed already. So you can just run it with just the interpreter command and that will run interpreter with the default setting. By default, it is using GPT-4. So it will ask you for your OpenAI key if you haven't already provided it. I have provided it. To get an OpenAI API key, you need to log in with your account on platform.openai.com. Click on this key API keys button here and you create a new secret key. And make sure you also have um, your billing set up. So where do you do that? In, or in settings, in billing, you have to have a payment method set up and a credit card link. Now previously they charged you per usage, but recently apparently you have to buy credits um, every time you want to use the API. But then yeah, you can just ask interpreter anything at this point. You can just be like, what are the files in my current directory and it kind of translates what English prompt you give it into either Python code or like shell code to execute to kind of um, to deliver on your task. So I've asked it what files are in my current directory. It's translated that into this Python code. You can run that just by pressing Y and it'll run that Python code and hopefully give you the answer to what you asked for. So let's see if that works. There you go. These are the files in my current directory. So that's the basic usage with GPT-4. Now, GPT-4 is very expensive. So there's one way to run that will be a bit cheaper, and that is to run it with GPT-3.5. And that's really easy to do. You just go interpreter with the flag dash f or dash dash fast. So you can see now it's using GPT-3.5 turbo. So not only is this cheaper, it's faster. Okay. Now that's one way to get it cheaper. Another way to get it even cheaper is to run your own LLM. Running a local LLM, a local AI and interfacing with Open Interpreter. Now there's two ways to do this. The first one is to just run interpreter dash dash local. And this is probably the easiest way as it doesn't require any additional software. The way this works is it'll download the best model for your specs in a Llama file and run that. So I'll probably stop it, but you can see, now you see it's actually downloading the Phi2 language model, which looks like it's about, that's probably 1.8 gigs. I'll show you the way that I normally interact with a local LLM. I normally run LM Studio. It used to be done with the local flag, but they've removed that to run um, Llama file. So the way we have to do it now is with um, the base, API base. API base. So this is kind of like an example um, of how we run it. We we point the API base to a local inference server. Now, where do we get that local inference server? You can use it with many different um, applications like Jan.ai or Olama. I think Olama might be the best, but I've just had LM Studio for a long time and it's very easy to use. So um, I'm using LM Studio. Um, you can download models with their search and then you click this arrows here and it opens up a local inference server. Apparently the best coding model here is Open Interpreter DS6. I'm gonna check the preset is the one I just made, Open Code Interpreter. I have a GitHub repository, AJ47 slash LM Studio presets on GitHub. And let's just restart the model just to make sure that it's using the right preset. And when that's done, we can start the server. And now you can see it's got a server running on localhost 1234. 
which is what we're going to point open interpreter to to the lm studio server we want to use the api underscore base flag and point that to localhost one two three four just like i did here now the api key can be something fake so just to prove that to you lm studio doesn't care about the api key or the model flag if you're using something else that uses different models at the same time, this model flag might be important, but for this scenario, it doesn't matter. So there we go. Now it's pointed to our local server. So we can run the same commands again. We might get a different output, but I think it'd still be very useful, this small model. It's only 7 billion parameters. I'm able to run it with my 2080 Ti. Let's just ask it something simple, like how many files are on my desktop? Now it's probably gonna be a bit slower as well because it's running on my local computer, but oh, it's not that slow, you can see here. It's um, writing a Python string to list the amount of things on my desktop. Oh yeah, next step, which is how do we run it with uh, like an external API like Grok? So Grok is the fastest LLM inference API that we can find. And so go to console.grok.com, set up an account and go to API keys and create an API key. Copy the API key from that. To link it with Open Interpreter, it's very similar to linking it with a local LLM, but instead of doing a local um, host as your base URL, we want to do the Grok um, base URL. So I have it in my history here. So you can see the base path is HTTPS API.grok.com slash OpenAI slash V1. And then you go API key, put your own API key. So I'm gonna put the one we just made, which I will delete later. So you can try using it now, but it won't last forever. And then here's the important part that you need to remember is the dash dash model. Now with Grok, they only support, they only provide two models last time I checked. Um, you can check that in their docs. Okay, they have three models and they have Gemma 7B now. Let's try Gemma 7B. That should actually be super fast. And you wanna get the API string. Here, see API string for Llama. So we're gonna get the Gemma API string and we just paste it in the quotes after the model flag. There we go. And you can also set the context window. So for Gemma, our context window is 8,000 tokens. So we can set that to 8,000. So that should be super fast. Just press enter and it should now link to Grok's API running the Gemma LLM. Okay, sweet. Now we have Grok with Gemma 7B. Now this is the fastest LLM we have, 800 tokens a second. So, okay, let's actually just, I don't think Gemma is very good at coding, but we can try get Gemma to code it for you. Create a Python program that translate English to SQL commands. Boom, whoa, that was so fast. Pretty soon, we'll find out. Oh, but this is so fast. The cool thing about Open Interpreter is you can run it with a dash Y flag, and that means you don't have to keep telling it to continue and stuff. It just continues.